From Hollywood, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show for Hormel and Spam. George and Gracie. Spam, oh boy. Spam, what joy. George Burns and Gracie Allen on a show when his orchestra for singing glee with a smooth history. Last but not least, and with Bud Easton. and Alan at your house. And say, have last-minute Christmas chores got you in a whirl? Now look, Mother, even though you don't get home until just before supper time, here's the quick, easy way to give your family swell food that satisfies husky appetites. Serve baked Spam, S-P-A-M. And baking is easy when you serve Spam. All you do is open a can of Spam, stud it with cloves, and slip it into the oven. The easy recipe is right on the label. In just a few minutes, you'll have a delicious main course. Spam is tender, juicy meat with extra goodness and flavor because Spam is a perfect combination of pork shoulder meat and ham meat. Tired appetites perk up with Spam on the table, and tired mothers like it because Spam is so easy to serve. Tomorrow, be sure your shopping list includes S-P-A-M Spam. your two favorite Spam stars, George and Gracie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Say, George, I saw Artie Shaw's picture second chorus at the Paramount last night. He was great. Really? Fred Astaire was swell. Paula Goddard was grand. Can I Bud Heaston make love? Wait a minute. Bud Heaston wasn't in the picture. Well, he was sitting next to me, if you know what I mean. (laughs) So you were at the Paramount last night, too, huh, bud? Yes. How did you like it? Oh, swell. Uh, next week, I'm going back to see the picture. <laughs> Gracie, how was Arnie Shaw as an actor? Well, he had plenty of trouble with his lines. Every time he opened his mouth, he stuck a clarinet in it. <laughs> Some love of that, Shaw. I'll bet every time he threw a kiss, Paulette got it. But... <laughs> Oh, well, no. Got it? <laughs> well, I... Oh, was... stop. George, I was only fooling. Well, I was got saying. it. That was a beauty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. There was Artie with his arms around Paulette Goddard, and Paulette was looking into his eyes, and Artie looked into Paulette's eyes, and then Fred Astaire kissed her, and Gracie, then... That... Uh, Gracie, how did Fred Astaire get into this? Well, he's very fast on his feet, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Well, I'm not bad either. No? You know, in vaudeville, I used to be Goldie of Goldie Fields and Glide. No. So do I. Really? And you could tell by that Goddard line that I did the comedy. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll show you something right now. You know how Fred Astaire jumps up in the air and clicks his heels three times? How many times? Three times. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I can jump up in the air and click my heels four times. Okay. Watch. How do you like it, Gracie? Oh, swell. You can come down now. <laughs> well, anyway, Artie, we've done a lot of kidding, but I hear that you're really great in the picture. Well, thanks a lot, George. I understand you play a romantic kid. Nah, George, those love scenes aren't all they're cracked up to be. For example, that scene at the breakfast table where I'm reading a newspaper and Paulette Goddard comes in and kisses me. Every time we did the scene, something went wrong. You know, she kissed me 52 times. Boy, that was awful. Awful? What was awful about that? I never got a chance to read Little Abner. <laughs> Kissed him 52 times. Should happen to me. You know, Artie, George and I danced in a picture with Fred Astaire. That's what gave Fred Astaire a start. 
It's kind of a hard line to get out. Jerry, yeah. you know, <laughs> start that stamp. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're, you're really kidding. That's your line, Audie. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. When he saw George dance the game, an awful start. Well, we got two laughs before that. Yeah. So that's <laughs> Well, let's continue from there. Where are we? Yo también vi esa película, esa señorita Pauleta Godard. Well, there you go, señor. Muy bueno. You said something funny, huh? Mm. Well, there goes the guitar player interrupting again. Hey, señor Shaw. Hey, Artie. Hey, boss. Hey, lover. What is it, señor Lee? Uh, you in the picture with Fred Astaire? That's a strange coincidence. Señor Lee, you said that wrong. Ah, perdona me. Señor Shaw, you being in the same picture with Fred Astaire is a strange coincidence. <laughs> well, that sort of finishes up Artie Shaw's new picture, Second Chorus. And Artie, you noticed I mentioned it three times. Is that enough? Yeah, and someday I'll write a little song about Spam. Well, thanks, kid. Gee, that'll be swell, Artie. Spam's bound to become number one on the Eat Parade. On the Eat Parade. <laughs> well, now, let's start our play. Gracie, give out the scripts. Okay, Bob, take it. Ladies and gentlemen, as you remember, last week we did a play, and we left off with George, Artie, and myself in jail, about to be hanged, and Gracie on the way to the governor to try and save our lives. Lights, curtain, music. <laughs> Gracie, where are the scripts? The, the, the scripts? Yeah, the scripts for the play. Oh, oh, the radio scripts. Yeah, the radio scripts. I gave them to you this morning. Where are they? You uh, uh, want to talk about my brother? <laughs> Who's interested in your brother? The woman across the street. Well, who cares? Her husband. <laughs> Gracie, we were having lunch at the Brown Derby, and I gave you a package. Where are the scripts? Oh, the scripts. Oh, let me see now. No, no, don't tell me. Hmm. Uh, I left the Brown Derby, and I went into that drugstore, and I put a nickel in the phonograph and played Beat Me Daddy Six to the Bar. Uh, and six to the Bar? Yeah, it was a cut-rate drugstore. <laughs> and then then I, I changed a dime and weighed myself, and I had nine pennies left, so I weighed myself nine more times. And I see. The audience is waiting. Yeah, Where then, were the oh, please, scripts? Please, please. Then I left. For the May department store, and I crossed the park, and there was a man surrounded by a lot of pigeons feeding them peanuts. And he said, Miss, how would you like to try this? And I did. I ate about two bags of peanuts. And Artie, then... Artie, will you play a number while Gracie tries to figure out where she left the scripts? And then the pigeons flew away, and I said goodbye to Mr. Reuter. To Mr. And... Reuter. <laughs>
Did I leave the script? Yeah, the script. Oh, I was on my way to the make company, and I stopped to buy a ticket for the Rose Bowl game. The man said, would you like to sit on the 50-yard line? And I said, no, the chalk would ruin my dress. And then... I see. We've I, got to do a show. Oh, We've please, got to... please. Hmm. And then the man said the tickets for the Rose Bowl were a dollar apiece. A dollar apiece? Oh, of course, it was a very small piece. <laughs> no, if, if I can get $200 more, I can buy the rest of the ticket. And uh, then... Gracie, try to remember what you did with the package. The scripts are in it. We're supposed to do a play. Oh, uh, señor Shaw, ¿por qué todas las noches tenemos que tocar Fenel? Si ya estoy cansado de tocar... Oh, yeah? Misma Tú vas a hacer lo que yo digo. Yo soy el jeep aquí. <laughs> what's going on here? Marty, what's your guitar player saying? What's he saying? I'm having enough trouble trying to figure out what I'm saying. <laughs> What's, uh, what's the argument about, Senor Lee? I do not like the number for NSC we just played. Every night we play it at the Pandemonium Ballroom. <laughs> pandemonium? See, si. It's Palladium. Oh. Pandemonium is a lot of noise and confusion. He swing and sway with Sammy Kay? <laughs> Artie, why do you take it from that musician? He's got a diploma from Casaloma. <laughs> Say, that's cute. Hey, George. What? Uh, try Spam and Chili with Rudy Villy. <laughs> you guys keep it up Just keep it up and you'll be hitting the road with Papa Joe. Oh, see now So I finally got to the May Company Oh, you, you finally got and, to the May Company yeah, yeah, and I went to the men's department And I said, I'd like to get a shirt for George And the man said, 34 sleeves And I said, no, two will be enough <laughs> Gracie, and, Gracie, when you got through shopping all day What did you do with the packages? The packages, the pack. Oh, those were all Christmas presents I took them all down to the post office and mailed them To the post office? Yes Well, you must have mailed the scripts with the rest of the packages Oh Oh, well, let's go down and look for them. Well, certainly. Well, they'll be easy to find. On account of all my packages are addressed direct to the exchange department of the May Company. You addressed them all, all your, you addressed all your gifts to the exchange department? Well, yeah, that'll save my friends a lot of trouble after Christmas. <laughs> well, come on, everybody. You better come with me to the post office and help me find the script. I'll help. I'll help. I'll help. Mr. Burns, I refuse to help. Who are you? Just a rugged individualist. <laughs> Everything happens to me. Well, come on, everybody. Let's go. Oh, well, George. George, I got it. The script. No, no. Uh, let's carry Herring with old Fred Waring. Oh, come on. Come on. Hey, four years in Harvard, open the door. Hey, Salman, I'm talking to you. Why don't you pay attention to your work? Mr. Burns, that is what I've been doing all my life. Four years I went to Harvard, studied diligently and never missed a lecture. The notes I made are used today as a model by the students at Harvard. Alongside me sat a student who never paid attention to anything. Instead of taking down notes, he wrote childish jingles on the margin of his notebook. Today, that man gets $50,000 a year writing those Burma shave signs, and this is what I do for a living. Well, this is no time of the year to be sad. Christmas is in the air. Think of Santa Claus. Poor Santa Claus reminds me of myself. Works hard all year and winds up holding the bag. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Let's get to the post office. I've got to find those scripts. Here we are at the post office. Boy, look at this crowd. Now, Gracie, Gracie, at what window did you mail the packages? Well, let me see now. Um, well, look for a handsome clerk with blue eyes, blonde mustache, and striped lipstick. He's got a sort of a... A, a striped lipstick? Well, yes. That's an account of I kissed him through the bars. <laughs> Well, let's stand at the end of this line. Don't push. 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 Who's pushing? Who's pushing? Who's pushing? Who's pushing? Who's pushing? Well, we'll never get to that window. I had to give you the scripts. Hey, George. George, I, I know how to get in front of this line. With all these men? Oh, yes. Yeah. Never. Well, just watch me. Look! Look, here comes Teddy Lamar. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Next. Who's first in line? I am. Oh, what a day. Have we been rushed? Do you know, miss, that today I sold a thousand one-cent stamps? Well, if I were you, I'd sell three-cent stamps. Why? Well, you know, you meet a better class of people. <laughs> 
How long have I been busy? I've been standing on my feet since 7 o'clock this morning. Oh, you must be tired. Why don't you let me stand on them for a while? Gracie, ask her about the packet. What? Ask her about the packet. Ask her about what? The packet, the packet. The packet, the packet. The packet, the packet. <laughs> Thanks for your help. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. welcome. Hey, George. George, when you get down to the window, will you mail this Christmas gift for me? Sure, if I ever get down there. Well, look, it's for me. Honey, what are you sending me? It's a lounging robe. That's funny. Last Christmas, I sent you a lounging robe. Well, it's the same loungy robe. (laughs) Well, thanks, kid. And you know what I want this Christmas? No, what? A great big (laughs) sailboat. Well, in this weather, you can use it. Uh, Senor Burns, will you please mail this package of dishes for me? Uh, but be careful with it. It's high-class crookery. Crookery? You mean crockery. Crookery means that you stole it. The man in back of me in the blue uniform is a sailor? <laughs> Gracie, find out about the scripts. Gracie, hey. Wait a minute. Gracie. What are you doing behind the window? Well, I'm taking the girl's place. She went out to look for the package. Oh, George, aren't people silly? You ought to read some of the letters they send. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. Listen to this one. Dear Santa Claus, please send us a man for Christmas. (laughs) And if you can't find one, please come yourself. (laughs) Sign Brenda and Cabina. Gracie, you mean you're opening the mail? Yeah, isn't it fun? I'm so glad I took you know, a place. You know, you know, you can be hurt. You can be held for a thing like that. Well, who do you think the man with his arms around me is? A sailor? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, by the way, it is. <laughs> Gracie, the package we've got. Oh, the... look! Isn't this a sad letter? Dear Santa Claus, we've been waiting for you for a long, long time, but you never come to visit us. If you don't come this year, what will I tell the children? Signed, Mrs. Santa Claus. Gracie, Gracie, you've got to find the script. When unexpected guests come knocking at your door like this, do you get into a twizzy, catch your breath, and say, oh, what shall I feed the bunch? Now, look, if you keep spam on your pantry shelf, this will happen when folks start knocking. You'll go right to the door, open it up... And say, come on in. You'll never worry about each. You'll have plenty of time to visit because you'll ask to be excused and go out into the kitchen like this. Then you'll open a can of Spam, cut off slices, and place on toast. Then you'll put on a slice of tomato, pickle, or Bermuda onion and cover with thin slices of cheese. Pop that into the oven until the cheese melts. And there you have a hot Spamwich. A one-plate meal that's sure to make a hit. Bring those hot Spamwiches out of the kitchen like this. And your guests will all say, yum, yum. 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 <laughs> the meaty flavor, the taste-tempting goodness of Spam is something folks really get hungry for. When friends drop in this holiday season, serve them a hot Spamwich. Or serve Spam cold or fried or baked. The easy recipes are right on the label. Fussy appetites like Spam because it's different. A perfect combination of sweet, juicy pork shoulder meat and tender, tasty ham meat. That's why Spam has extra goodness, extra flavor. To be sure of getting the real thing, always look for this sentence on the Spam label, pork shoulder meat with ham meat added. Tomorrow, say to your food dealer, I want Spam. You can serve it dozens of ways. Isn't that right, smoothies? Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it. Cold or hot, Sam hits the Tracy, get away from that window. We've got... Hey, you stop pushing! Stop pushing! Stop pushing! Stop pushing! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! We did that! 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 Quiet! Quiet! Well, who's next? Gracie, will you come out from behind that stamp window? We've got to find the script. Say, sourpuss, get back in line. Miss, can I have a one-cent stamp? Well, we've got a one-cent stamp if you really want it. But if I were you, I'd take one of our six-cent stamps. They're a little more expensive, but they'll last longer. And they're washable. And besides that, they look very pretty on your tongue. Miss, I'd like a one-cent stamp. 
The one that has Lincoln's picture on it. Oh, well, which Lincoln do you mean? Henry Fonda or Walt Houston? <laughs> Never mind. Next time I'll go by train. Well, isn't that a silly man? <laughs> Next? And what can I do for you, sir? Remember me? I'm George Burns. George Burns? Oh, weren't you in Vaudeville? Yeah, we played together at the DeKalb in Brooklyn. Well, didn't you work with a very beautiful girl? Yes, and that happens to be you. Oh, well, imagine running into me. It certainly is a small world. <laughs> Gracie, what about the script? Please, Come out back in line. Oh, oh well, what can I do for you, madam? I hope I'm not too late, miss. Can I catch the china clipper? Well, you might be able to if you put another feather in your hat. <laughs> Look, Gracie, what about the script? Will you come Get up? back in line. Listen here. Get back in line. Well... Look, miss, I've been writing with one of your pens, and I've got a handful of ink. A handful of ink? Well, thanks for telling me. You may keep it for your honesty. <laughs> Gracie, what about the script? Get back in line. Look, I'm not getting back in line. boy, George. You stay out of this. Anybody that talks that way to George Burns gets a punch in the nose. You know who I am? No, who are you? I'm the vice president of the Hormel Company, makers of Spam. You know who I am? No. Thank goodness. <laughs> Shame. I better get back in line. Uh, Senor Burns. Will you mail this package to my brother? It's a pair of steel skin gloves. It's not steel skin. It's not steel, it's seal. Steel. No, no, seal. Look, what has a flat head, small eyes, a mustache, and a beautiful fur coat? My brother's wife. <laughs> Look, senor, I've got my own troubles, Gracie. We've got to find our scripts. Hey, George, I got it. The scripts? No. Let's have sandwiches and tea with Fibber McGee. Oh, go away. <laughs> George... How'd you make out? Well, I certainly got a lot of help out of you, Artie. Where have you been? What a madhouse this post office is. I sat down at that long table over there, and before I knew it, I was weighed, stamped, and airmailed special to Pomona. <laughs> now, look, I've got to do something. Well, George, your troubles are over. Here comes the superintendent, and he's got my package under his arm. Oh, no, no, no. Before I give it to you, miss, you'll have to answer a few questions. Now, um, what's your name? Um, Gracie T T T T T Allen. What are all those T's for? Well, when my daddy first saw me, he said... <laughs> Look, mister, can we have the package Just now? Just a moment now. Miss, can you identify yourself? Well, certainly. Where's my handbag? Right here, Gracie. Oh, wait till I look in the mirror. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> hey, I can't stand it. This is awful. Well, never mind. Here's your package. Well, yeah. thanks. Come on. Great. I've got the script. Come on, everybody. We've got to get out of here. Ouch! Ouch! Oh, ouch! Ouch! Oh, ouch! Oh. Well, come on. Let's get back to the studio. Hey, taxi! Taxi! And so tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the second episode of Gracie Allen's dynamic play. As you remember last week, George, Bud, and Artie were in the jail, sentenced to be hanged. And Gracie was on her way back from the governor's offices, where she'd been making a plea for their lives. The scene opens with the boys anxiously pacing their cell as Gracie arrives. Well, oh, this is simply off. Oh, gosh. she's been away for hours. Never get over oh, it. it. Oh, boys, I've got some terrible news for you. Oh, you mean we're going to the gas chamber? Worse than that. We're going to be hanged? Worse than that. Electrocuted? No, worse than that. Well, what can be worse than that? I left the scripts in the taxi. Oh. <laughs> Now the smoothies, Bab, Charlie, a little, will sing. Take it, kids. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride a one-horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. All the fields we go. Laughing all the way, bells on bobtail ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing, a sleigh and song tonight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to sing this song tonight. Now's the time to bring good cheer. Jingle 
Jingle bells, jingle bells, Christmas ya llegó. Oyen las campanas que ya Santa Claus salió. Jingle bells, jingle bells, hay felicidad. Todos les deseamos una Merry Navidad. Now's the time to bring the Jingle bells, jingle bells, a happy man I am. Ha 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 ha, I didn't mention spam. Yeah. Now's the time to bring good cheer. Jingle, 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 look who's here. Jingle, 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 Gracie's here. Here I am, here I am, there's nothing more for you. I wish you all good Christmas cheer, a bright and happy coming year. My mother and I, my brother and I, my daddy and sister say, to gather round and sing with us this Merry Christmas Day. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Merry Christmas to you. Every day, more and more families discover that Spam solves mealtime problems quickly. Originated by Hormel, Spam has become the most popular meat item brought out in a generation. Spam is tender, juicy meat with a taste and a flavor all its own. Fry golden brown slices for breakfast. Serve Spam cold for lunch, just as it comes from the cam. To bake Spam for dinner. Look for the easy recipes on the label. If you haven't yet tried Spam, now's the time. You're really missing something extra good. Tomorrow, ask your food dealer for S-P-A-M Spam. Thanks, Buck. Well, Gracie, say goodnight. Well, good night. Say, George, I just thought of a riddle. A riddle? What is it? Um, what did the governor of North Carolina say to the governor of South Carolina? What did he say? Merry Christmas. Uh, good night, all. <laughs> Have you tried Hormel Chili Con Carne? Even those who think they don't like chili do like Chili Con Carne the way Hormel makes it because it's different and everybody likes it. Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel Chili Con Carne tomorrow. Join us again next week for Burns and Allen with Artie Shaw and his orchestra in the smoothies. This is Bud Heaston speaking for Hormel and Spam, reminding you that Spam hits the spot. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm-hmm.